Alright, hello everyone, I'm Benjamin from ABR Bern, and in this video I'm going to show you how I implemented steering wheel control on my computer project using an Arduino. First of all, what you need to know is that this video is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, it aims at showing you the method I used in order to make my project work. So it would be interesting for you if you are uh, working on a similar projects or if you're just curious and want to understand more about how you uh, use the systems in your car works. So in this video, I'll first show you how does my project, which is the car computer, works. Then I'll explain how much messages are sent in my car, which is a Peugeot 207. And finally, I'll explain how to get these data, uh, these messages, uh, into the Pi for the project. Let's start with the project of the computer itself. The base is a Raspberry Pi 3, on which I mounted an expansion board, a Subtronic X400, which acts as an audio card with an, an amplifier, but also as a voltage regulator. The voltage regulator does perfectly its job, so I can plug it directly to the battery of the car and also to the different speakers in the car. I have also added an RTL SDR. It's a software defined radio. It's a really cheap way to get FM signals on a computer. And I've also plugged it directly to the antenna of my car to kind of have the same quality you have with the original radio uh, on board. There is also a USB key on which I put the music that I want to play in my car that I simply plug into my Raspberry Pi. And finally, in order to control all this, the Wi-Fi module of the Raspberry Pi is generating a network. I connect to it using a phone or a tablet, and from that phone I can control uh, what I want to do. So now that we have seen how the computer works, let's see how messages are being exchanged in my car. So my car is a Peugeot 207, 1.4 liter HGI, and was manufactured in 2007. So how does it work? The brain of the car is called in the French documentation the BSI. So it's the main calculator. To this calculator are plugged different networks. If you put diagnostic system aside, there are three main networks that are all using CAN protocols. The last network is the one that is interesting for us. It's called CAN Conf, as in comfort, so it handles all the comfort system in the car. So for instance, it's linked to the radio, to the air conditioning system, to the dashboard the it's displaying data to the driver, and finally, what is important for us, the steering wheel commands. Where did I find this? Well, after a lot of work, I finally decided to buy this book called Revue Technique Automobile. It's first designed for professional and explain in detail how everything is working and how to move everything. But there is a section about electronics and what they call multiplexing. So in there, it explains all the different networks, how they are linked together. And one thing that is important for us, at which speeds the networks are working. Now that we know this, we can replace the radio, well, the wires that went into the radio, by a CAN reader. For my case, I used an Arduino with a CAN module, which communicates with the Raspberry Pi. I know that I could have directly plugged it on the module on the Raspberry Pi, but I wanted to do it via an Arduino, because on the long run, I want the Arduino to be constantly plugged to the battery and switch off the Raspberry Pi when the engine is turned off. With my Arduino finally connected to my conf network at the right speed, I met it send all what it saw to my computer and recorded it into CSV files. So I did a lot of recordings. Uh, during one, the engine was turning. During another, the engine wasn't. During one, I was using the wheel commands. So all these different changes in order to see if the mes messages were different. After I analyzed all these files manually using basic Unix commands like grep or sort in order to see if there was any difference between one recording to another. After some work, I finally found out that the messages were sent from the ID 31, but that the trick was that even if no button was pressed, a message was sent anyway. 
Once that was done, I could quickly identify which message corresponded to which button or group of buttons pressed on the string wheel commands. So my final Arduino code was quite simple, it's just reading messages from ID31 and if it recognizes one of the buttons, it sends a two-letter message to the Raspberry Pi to say, for instance, volume plus was pressed. On the Raspberry Pi side, the script is also quite simple, it's just a Python loop which reads what the Arduino says and for instance, if it receives VV plus, then it would put the volume up. That's it for my video, I hope that you liked it and understood it despite my wonderful French accent. If you have any question, feel free to ask in the comments and feel also free to visit my website abartben.wordpress.com to see my other crazy projects like this.